Welcome to the SB Grid YouTube channel. Software tutorials by developers. Lectures by structural biologists. Unique content brought to you by SB Grid. So thanks for inviting me to talk about this. I always love nerding out about cryoEM sample prep. Um, and like it was said, I sort of have the cryoEM hat trick where in my uh, PhD, I did single particle uh, electron microscopy, and then I did um, tomography also. Will and I overlapped in Grant Jensen's lab. And then now in Tamir Gonin's lab, uh, I'm learning about microED, and that is quite delightful. Uh, so I'd like to tell you some of our tricks today. So just a brief introduction, uh, microcrystal electron diffraction was pioneered in the Gonin lab. Um, and so with it, we continuously rotate a microcrystal or nanocrystal in the electron beam and then collect diffraction data as a movie. And so this gives us uh, diffraction patterns and we can get the intensity of each um, reflection and then use phasing methods to solve structures. And since the data are collected uh, continuously, it's analogous to X-ray crystallography and traditional X-ray software can be used to process a lot of the data. And so why might you choose to do microED? Um, so uh, it's a growing field and you can solve structures of small molecules, natural products, complexes, organometallics, uh, soluble proteins, membrane proteins, et cetera. Uh, and of course, this is a super quick talk, but you might be interested in checking out this recent review from Lisa Clark from our group, uh, talking about ways that microED can be used to look at protein ligand interactions in particular. Um, and we're pretty excited about that. So uh, why would you use microED? Some proteins are gonna grow into large, beautiful, easy to loop crystals, like these like classic lysozyme crystals. But it's more common that our crystals are going to be a lot smaller, like the ones pointed at by these little arrows, and those are perfect for microED. But of course, it would be super difficult to loop for crystallography in an X-ray. Uh, and so here is another example of a crystal screen drop from a um, crystal screen for uh, a membrane protein. And it's hard to imagine looping an individual crystal for X-ray crystallography there, but actually this drop is perfect for microED. Um, and so in it, uh, Xian found these little tiny crystals, this rectangle here, or square here of the non-selective cation channel NAC and was able to solve the structure to two and a half angstroms. Uh, and so it's also exciting because with electron microscopy, you can explore charge. And so we're interested in that for ion channel biology. Uh, also with microED, uh, we can minimize radiation damage compared to some other techniques. So in single particle, you might take 20 to 60 electrons per angstrom squared total exposure, and that might be in half an electron per frame. Uh, whereas in microED, we can solve a structure like this one of proteinase K using an average exposure of less than one electron per angstrom squared. And so this lets us see things like intact disulfide bonds and acidic side chains. So for a microED experiment, you uh, start with a crystal screen condition, like for example, this 96 well plate, which might have come out of a high throughput crystallography uh, screen. And you want to open the drop just before you're freezing. Um, and so Lisa did a really great job of explaining how freezing works for cryoEM. So I'm not going to talk about it, but we use the same work workflow where we are going to pipette our sample onto a grid, and then we can plunge freeze it using really any method you want. In our lab, we've used Vitrobots, Leicas, a manual plunger similar to the one that the Lander Lab uses, uh, it all works. And so we'll take our sitting drop, perhaps from here, we might take pick up the whole drop and pipette it onto the grid, or we might mix it with some of the solution from the reservoir or some buffer, uh, and then blot it and plunge freeze. Sometimes using these 96 well plates is a little bit tricky because of the small volumes. Uh, so we'll often scale up to a hanging drop in a larger plate. So these drops are larger volumes that should have crystals in them. Uh, and we also like to use, uh, if we're feeling rich, we like to use these screw top lids instead of the cover slides, which are made of glass. Um, and maybe it's because I'm a single particle cryo-EM person, but I always break the glass cover slides. And so it's hard to do this process quickly. So if you can afford the screw top lids, or if you're less clumsy than I am, um, you'll be good. 
<laughs> so once you've plunged frozen your grids, you should be able to take some uh, TEM data. And so you might get an atlas and then a grid square, which looks like this. And in this paper, um, these tiny crystals at A, B, and C were shot, and they showed beautiful diffraction. But what if you have crystals uh, or potential crystals that look like these bigger blobs, and you shoot them and you don't see any diffraction? It might be that your target is not a crystal and doesn't diffract. That's totally possible. Or it might be that the sample is too thick. So you're probably wondering what's the best crystal size for microED, uh, and I'm glad to report that the lab did some um, experiments to fib mill crystals of proteinase K to various thicknesses, which correspond to um, multiples of the inelastic mean free path of the electrons at a given accelerating voltage. And you can read more about this in the paper, but basically they used uh, thicknesses which were half of the mean free path up to five times. And they found that as long as your sample is thinner than two times the mean free path, ideally around one times the mean free path, uh, you can solve structures, no problem. So if your crystals are too thick, you have options. Um, or if your crystals are imperfect, uh, sometimes we will pipette, vortex, or sonicate to break up our crystals into smaller pieces. And so in this case, from this Nature Methods paper, the tau uh, peptides were sonicated. And then um, instead of having this diffuse diffraction, now we have individual spots. And in this paper and the corresponding protocol, they also go through a bunch of crystals which were large, sonicate or pipette or vortex to break them and get nice crystals for microED. Some of our crystals, when we try to sonicate them, they're too fragile for it. This is particularly true of membrane proteins. So we like to use fib milling, which will also very beautifully described. Uh, so sometimes when we say too thick, it might be that the crystal itself is too thick to shoot for like maybe it's three times the inelastic mean free path. Or it could be that it's a crystal which is embedded in some thick media. So this could be ice. And you might be able to optimize your blotting conditions during the plunge freezing step. But some things like if you're in lipidic, bice, uh, lipidic cubic phase or lipid bicells, things that are really viscous, sometimes it, you, you can blot as much as you want, but you're not going to be able to get the crystal in thin enough um, samples. So then we will use fit milling. And so um, now you might be wondering, uh, what else can I do with microED? And I will remind you to come to Tamir's talk later this month, um, and he'll excite you even more now that you know how to do um, the sample prep. And so I have a few references, which you might be interested in. And then um, thanks to you for your attention and the Gonin Lab, and um, you can make your side chains look like this. Yes. Great. Thank you.